my friends, welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you have been here before, thank you so much for coming back. It is February 2021. I'm, I've been itching to do this image since they came out and um, I got to see what I would be coloring. This is by um, Sarah Richter. And for the life of me, I cannot think of um, his name. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank, but I will have it in the description box down at the bottom. Um, yeah, from the moment I saw this image, I knew I had to color it. I, I've never colored a guy before. Um, <clears throat> but I thought, okay, this is the time to do it because isn't he just yummy? And I was looking at him and I was thinking, um, you know, I'm thinking kind of a combination between Thor and Legolas. So, so that's what we're going to do. So I've got um, two hours today for the video. So we're not going to get him all done, but I will um, continue to work on him in more videos on my channel after um, this weekend is over. So if you're going to color along with me, we can keep on going. So I'm going to start with his skin. I did print this on my um, uh, Nina Desert Storm cardstock, and there will there's a link down in the description box to that as well. Um, if you do not like um, Strathmore Tone Tan because you think it's too toothy for you, then this is the paper. And you will love it. I cannot get enough of this paper. I actually bought two of the big packages of it because I was afraid that it would go out of stock. So I'm well, I'm I'm well stocked with this paper, and it seems like it's pricey. But when I did a breakdown of it compared to the Strathmore toned tan, it's actually cheaper per page um, for this. So. It's just that you get a like 250 sheets, so it's a big package. And um, just just ask anybody who's used it; they'll tell you they love it. Anyway, um, so that is what I printed this on, and I printed the um, um, in a light grayscale, so we have a little bit of creative freedom. And let's get going. I'm wasting time, so I'm going to start with. Um, burnt ochre. We're going to do probably all of this page in Prismacolors. And we're going to put this burnt ochre very lightly all over his entire face. Wait, I'm stopping right there because I'm a big dummy. And I actually want to do my white highlights first, which is one of the reasons why I love this paper so much, because you can get your, your white highlights laid down first. I got a little too excited there. So we're going to start with the white. And the other thing I love about this paper is that I can put my white highlights down, but then I can keep adding more white to the top after I've laid color down and it lightens and brightens again with no problem. Okay, I'm going to do my um, light source kind of coming from this way. So we'll do the light on this side of his nose. And the front side of this part. And let's see, just because I, um, just because I'm going to go ahead and do the whites of his eyes. Okay, let's do a little bit of, we might cover this up with beard, so I'm not sure, but I think right there. Do a little bit here. I'll zoom in here in a minute. 
And hopefully I won't go out of frame once I do. I do tend to do that sometimes. Okay. Anywhere else? Let's do the ear. Front of the ear. Um, I'm not going to do his jaw because I am going to cover that. So we'll start, we'll start there and if we have to add more, we will. Okay, now we're going to do the burnt ochre. And I should probably start with the ear because if you have ever visited my channel, you know that I'm notorious for forgetting to do ears. <laughs> even though this one is kind of hard to miss. This is a um, newly tried color combo for skin for me. So, because I wanted him to be very um, rugged and tan, I didn't want him to be real light like a lot of the other color combos. So, this is a new one. And hopefully, <laughs> I will get it to come out the way I want it to. I know, I'm still kind of zoomed out, but I think that that's okay right now. I do want to get some white right here. Back to the burnt ochre. There are so many beautiful images from the event this month available in all of the artists Etsy shops and I'll have all of those linked in the description box as well although you've probably already visited them all because today is Sunday second day of the event but I'm going to put them down there anyway and I will be coloring some of those this month as well because there are just too many to not <laughs> Too many. So many coloring pages and so little time. Okay, and I think that this is him as well. Yes. Probably we'll just do it all the way back. Okay, I get him all. Is that going to be him? I think this is probably partly him, too. Okay. Alrighty, let's do 
Parma Violet. With some of these shadowy areas. I should say shaded areas. But you know what I mean. <laughs> missed a whole area that I would like to work on here. So let's bring this back again, find my pencil. I do tend to do that sometimes too. <laughs> totally forget certain areas. So I'm going to call that hair, but I'm going to call this skin Okay, back to, oh, you know what? I'm using the wrong one. I'm using Grade Lavender, and I want Parma Violet. So let me do that. Okay, it's probably not going to make too much of a difference. But it definitely is a darker color. So I'll just add some of that. It's going to get covered up with other colors anyway. But I like the way it adds some different colors to the skin. Okay, let's do some I'm using a really light pressure because I don't want it to be too heavy yet. I'm debating <laughs> where I want this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use some of this to start contouring his face a little bit. Again, really light pressure. We'll start there. Let's use some under his eyes. All right, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. Okay, I can always add more if I feel like I need it later. So now we're going to do clay rose. And kind of right on top of what we just did. But um, bringing that color even a little bit further out into the skin.
I can tell I'm concentrating because I'm not talking. <laughs> Seems like I either talk too much or not enough. Okay, let's... Is that enough? Somewhere there. Let's do a little bit under. We're going to do terracotta and we're going to do that all over. And when I say all over, I mean all over except for on top of the highlight. We want to try and leave that alone for a little while. I like the way the um, the orangey colors, like the terracotta and the sienna brown, I like the way they mix with the purple colors, like the parma violet and the grade lavender. Missing little areas down here. Okay, so that was terracotta all over. Now we're going to use chestnut and we're going to use that to start deepening some of these shadows and the outer edge of his face. This is one of my favorite colors in Prismas. I use this a lot. feel like I just want to zoom out just a little bit because I know me. <laughs>
is when it starts getting fun for me, when you start adding in all the contouring, the darker colors. Okay, I think I want to add shadow kind of here. Okay, how much shadow do we want under his chin here? I do like to talk to myself, though. <laughs> okay. Let's go up around here. I'm going to go ahead and add some of the shadows from the crown with this because I don't do very well adding shadows afterwards. They always seem to look muddy, although I always seem to have to, but I'll try here first. <laughs> So most of you guys probably already know this, but Sarah actually has a um, Facebook group. So if you are not a member of that group, you should go over there and and, um, and join, because then you can share your completed coloring pages over there of her stuff. She's got tons of really, really beautiful images in her Etsy shop, not just this one. Okay, like that. I think. Let's do his nose here. I think I want to make sure that I preserve that and then I'll come in with the dark Make sure we get some Okay, maybe a little bit down here. And maybe 
see a little bit of white. what I want to do there. Okay. Um, I'm debating on some color choices here. Oh, one more thing I want to not forget to do is just put a little of this to some light umber this is my double ended pencil <laughs> gluing two short pencils together works really really well just saying <laughs> alright this is going to go all over as well Again, except for those highlights and the areas that you want to keep really light. I'm not going to go too heavy right here because I think I kind of want his um, earlobe to be a little lighter too. I didn't get any white on that, so... I'm not going too crazy down here on his chin because I'm going to be adding more color there when I do the beard. So I don't want it to get too much color on there where I start losing tooth. I shouldn't because this paper has some nice, nice tooth to it and takes pretty good layers even though it's smooth or smooth, smoother than the Strathmore. I feel like I've been neglecting this area right down here. Okay. Are we ready to blend with the peach? I think we are. So we're going to use light peach now that we've got enough color, darker color laid down here. Um, we're going to use light peach. And we're going to apply a little bit firmer pressure than we've been applying. So it's kind of a medium pressure. And we're going to use this to blend everything out. And the beauty of this, again, is even though we're blending we're not burnishing yet we're not we're not pressing down so hard that we can't more add more layers on top after this gets finished so now you can start to um, use your light peach 
and start blending in to some of that white. I think I might go kind of light with my peach over here because I'm gonna I'm gonna keep adding more dark to that and I don't want to uh, take up too much tooth. I'm also not going to blend <clears throat> too much down here into the um, chin area. We'll do that after we put some more um, colors down for his beard. Or his, his five o'clock shadow, I should call it. <laughs> Okay, I want, let's go ahead and, I think I am going to do a little bit of blending, a little bit of that peach, light peach color goes down here, then we'll, all these areas that are not blended, they're bugging me, so, <laughs> okay, so. Let's go ahead and add some color down there on his face. So I'm just going to light pressure. It's 
start to add this is light umber Let's do espresso. Again, you want to use really light pressure because it's a dark color. Use that light pressure until you get comfortable with what your pencil is doing on the paper. Okay, I'm gonna stop there for now and pull out my black grape. Just because <laughs> I want to get his nostril colored in here. Just makes me feel better. <laughs> kind of like sometimes I'll stop doing the skin and I'll get the eyes and lips done because 
I really can't tell if I'm happy with the skin until the eyes and lips are done. Always say that and then I keep going. <laughs> okay, I think we want to do some espresso in the shadows now as well. use chestnut for that. We'll do chestnut. Okay. I keep going with the espresso. I made a smoothie for my lunch and I haven't been drinking it. I'm really bad about drinking enough liquids. Okay, oh, espresso. Still feel like I want this to be a little bit darker. And I also, hmm, what do I think? Um, let's do a little bit of this underneath here. And I think that his um, lower half needs some either maybe burnt ochre. I feel like he's not tan enough on his body. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that. I think we, not we, I. <laughs> I think I neglected this down here when I was putting my colors down. So.
That's starting to look a little bit better. Okay. I think I would like to do a little bit of a blending with my blender pencil. So let's do that. I absolutely love this Karen Dash blender. <laughs> I cannot say enough good things about it. You don't have to press hard. Um, in fact, you probably don't want to press hard because you don't want to burnish it. But um, it will just come in here and smooth everything that you've been doing. I know I'm really bad habit about not using my brush. Um, and in my experience, again, I can still come in and add more layers, even after I've done this. It helps me to see what I need to add. And I, I do think using it in little um, ovals or circles works best. Even though I don't probably always do that but here's a good pretty good place to show you how it just it just smooths all that so so nicely I just love it this would be in my on my list of coloring tools I could not do without well, I probably could do without it, but I wouldn't want to do without it. <laughs> All right, let's... I'm debating on whether I should just go ahead and do blend his beard right now. I think I, I think I will. So I definitely want to use little circles for this. I know I keep calling it a beard. It's not really a beard. I still want <clears throat> this to be even darker, so I'm going to come in with my espresso again. Chestnut, too, I think. Um, okay, he's not dark enough. So, 
just keep adding this espresso. And I might pull out my chestnut. I don't want to be careful not to make him look like he's got blush. Because <laughs> that would not be good. Um, let's try some light umber. I also don't want his contour to look like his beard either. So I'm not sure what to do there. Maybe some more burnt ochre. Not bad. Um, back to espresso. I'm getting close to the point where I want to do his lips and his eyes. Because that will help me a lot in knowing if I've gone far enough with my darks. some more dark to his beard. So more espresso. I want his five o'clock shadow to be a little bit more pronounced. I'm going to add some of that down here, too. This just looks unloved. <laughs> it looks like it's not, um, just not been worked on. It's neglected. This is peach. Just blending this with the, not peach, light peach, sorry. Okay, let's, I want to do his lips because I really feel like, that will help me. So we still need some shiny, even though he's not. And I wanna, I'm gonna take my pencil, my white pencil, and try and make that highlight where the line of the drawing is. Okay, now I'm going to take nectar. Let's see, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. And I'm gonna do his lips just like I do girls' lips, except I'm gonna leave them really natural. Uh, 
Um, do I want any little highlight? I think maybe a little bit top. I think I need to sharpen. Okay, and now chestnut. Good. I think we're going to leave them pretty much just like that because I feel like that's how his lips would look. Maybe if we wanted to, we could add just a little bit more shine. Okay. Where are we at time-wise? Yeah, we're doing good. Okay. So... I want blue eyes for him, so I'm going to start with light cerulean blue, and I'm going to just Get to do this so nectar right here along the edge and what else do I want let's try nectar in the corner and then a little chestnut Okay, so let's do some, I'm going to sharpen my slate gray. Thought it was sharp, but it wasn't. And I'm going to use this light gray on the outer edge. I need to get his pupils in there. They're driving me crazy, too. <laughs> I need to be able to. So this is um, my Arteza block because it just happened to be what I had. Um, but any black will do. I like the that it's a little harder than the Prisma black. Okay, so since I have it in my hand... Do I want to use that or do I want to use my, I have lots of different blacks that I like to use for different reasons. This is a Sparrow Farben black. But again, I think any, any black that you use, and I actually did not want to get black right there, so. Okay, 
to this is the part where you gotta be I got want to be careful because I don't want him to look like he's got eye makeup on. But I do want his lashes to be a little more pronounced. He's a pretty boy. <laughs> so he's gonna have naturally lovely dark lashes. I think he still looks masculine. I'm going to add some gray to his, to the whites of his eyes. I think we'll start with 30%. I'm not quite happy with his eyes yet. Let's take our black. And make these little tiny lines. And maybe some more slate gray. Sometimes you just got to work them until you get them right. But I kind of like the dark ring that goes around the outer edge. And we're going to break out the old Posca pen. Amazing how that makes a difference. Really, really amazing. All right, I think I'm ready to keep working on the skin now. Although I do think that I want a little bit more darkness in between his um, two lips here. So start with the chestnut. But I think maybe I need to use some black. So for this, I will go ahead and use my Prisma Black. Oh, I'm going to go really, really lightly. I think that's a little bit better. the chestnut. Alrighty. I want to do something to the beard. So you can either take a sharp pencil, probably Probably won't be able to dot. Probably will have to get in there and really, or maybe you can dot, but maybe you need a it needs to be soft like a prisma. So I think when you do it, you just gotta be really careful. However, what I am going to do is I'm going to take one of my Arteza fine liners. This is um, the Inconic, and this is color A137. And what I love about the fine these fine liners is they go right over the prismas with no problem at all. 
and I can give him that stubble just by putting these teeny tiny little dots on here. It's so much easier than trying to do it with a um, pencil. If you want to, as you're doing it, before they dry completely, you can just dot your finger on top and it kind of smudges it a little bit and softens it. I'm going to give him blonde hair, um, dark blonde hair, I guess. So I don't want his beard to be too dark, but I do want it to be, you know, manly. <laughs> so let's see. Let me, at this point, I'm going to just kind of, that's not dark enough. I'm just going to. Keep adding color until I am happy. I feel like we still need some darkness that I'm not getting, and I don't, I'm not quite sure how to get it. So I'm going to start with his eyes to me, just need to be a little bit more penetrating. <laughs> So I am going to add some more black. Don't don't go too long. Don't go too long. You'll wind up with girly lashes. We don't want. His eyebrows, I want to get some color down on those too. So, this is Sandbar Brown. This is one of the colors I'm going to use in his hair. sandbar brown down here too. Hmm. There's a thought. <laughs> Hopefully I don't cover up too much of the um, little dots we just put on there. I don't think I will. I think it's How we doing? What happens if I add some more white right on top of his cheekbone? I just love how I can add white on top of the end and it still shows up. That is just like the best. <laughs> Something, something there isn't quite right. So let's see, we'll take some light peach.
right. How am I feeling about this? I think I'm feeling pretty good. Um, part of me still is not happy about the darkest of the shadowy areas, though. And I'm almost tempted to, I'm afraid to break out black because I think that would just be a bad idea. But maybe I break out that black grape again. And before I do that, I want to blend this a little bit. I might feel better about this once I get the hair on. But that, that's feeling better. I think I'm gonna do this. And it's terracotta or What's the other one I used? <laughs> Not chestnut. Is it terracotta? I could have sworn I had a sienna brown in here or a burnt ochre. That's what I want. Burnt ochre. Just do a little bit of that here too. use this for the shadow under his crown. I hate it when I go crazy and get pencil where I don't want it. Okay, I think we're close to being done. But you know how we could just, I could just keep tweaking this and tweaking it. So I might move on um, so we can be sure to get the hair done at least for the video. And then I might come back. Um, I don't like what I did to his nose there. I might come back. Um, you know, and keep working on his skin a little bit in sub in a subsequent video. But all in all, I'm pretty happy. They're just a few little tweaks that I feel like it needs. Um, blender. Where's my blender? Over here on his ear. His ear, there's something that isn't right. Clay Rose. There we go. I needed something that would bridge the gap and blend that white. This is a nice color. <laughs> it's like, hmm, yeah, just keep using some of this. OK, 
he would have a little bit of shadow there on the other side of his nose. I could just keep tweaking forever, but I think he's pretty good. I um, <laughs> it's hard when you're limited in your um in your time and you want to keep working. Um, okay, so let's um let's go ahead and do his hair so that we can make sure we get at least a good portion of that done. I just this is <laughs> this is killing me. And I have no idea why this is, but I feel like I just really want. This is, um, yeah, see what he's missing. And it's because, I can tell you why it is. It's because I printed the really light um, gray version. So the shadows that um, would have been in the darker version are not here. And or the black, you know, the black, the more black tones, and so I think that's what I'm missing is um, the darker tones because when I printed out a test page just for me to um, try a few things out, I didn't print the really light page. I printed the darker page. And it has darker, um, it has darker stuff on it. So I think that's the difference. I think when I'm kind of looking at my test page, I'm going, well, wait a minute, where's all the dark colors? And it's because the dark colors are on the other printed page. So that will definitely tell you I mean, keep that in mind when you're deciding on which which um, page to print. Okay, I might have got a little bit crazy with the dark over here. <laughs> ah, okay. Got to balance it out here. But I do think that in order for a page to be really interesting for me in my eye, it needs to have a good um, mix of really dark and, and really light. It just makes it so much more interesting. So just as I keep going and keep tweaking, as I'm adding more and more dark to this, I'm liking it better and better and better and better. So there you go. That's... Lesson learned. I know. I said I was going to do hair, and I'm still doing skin, which is... Okay, so I'm going to stop on his skin for now. It, he's getting better, and I think once we get the hair on, I'll be happier. Okay, so let's zoom out. Whoops. See, when I go too far, it pops into this weird. Okay, so I'm going to um, pull all of the pencils that I need for um, his hair. And you will see me in the snap of a finger. Okay, so I'm going to do like a dark, dirty blonde hair. So I will just lay some highlights down first and I do want to let's see I want my pencil where's my pencil I know I have one here you know how you have so many pencils on the table that you just can't see anything <laughs> oh there it is okay I do want to put 
a few more little guideline bits for myself just to make sure that I'm able to give myself enough um, depth and definition in the hair. So I think that's good. Maybe we'll Okay, so I want his, um, my thought was that I wanted this side of his hair to be a lot larger, a lot lighter than this side of his hair. We're going to, we're going to try and go a little bit darker over here and let the lightest part be in front. So we'll see how that goes. So this is eggshell. And I'm putting down in some random long places, but also in some heavier in some areas where I think the light would would hit heavier. If that makes sense. Look, he's got beads in his hair. How cool is that? Oh, that'd be fun. Okay. So We'll add more as we go, but this will get us started. Okay. Now, beige sienna. This is driving me crazy. Uh, sorry, just pay no attention to the crazy lady. I just needed to blend that out. But once I took a step away and turned the camera off while I got my pencils um, and looked at him, I'm really happy with the way he turned out, the way he looks. So I can relax a little bit on that. You know, doing these colors on this paper, I'm, I find a little bit more challenging doing blonde hair because the colors don't really show up a whole lot on the on the tan paper until you really start getting things covered and Might not have added enough <clears throat> enough eggshell on this side. Some more eggshell down here, a little bit down here. I don't want to forget to do <laughs> to do the hair down here. I'm gonna add a little bit more in here because I, I do I do really want to make sure that he stays light over here.
will come back and do his uh, jewelry and and stuff probably on a later another day okay sandbar brown is next this in the shadowed parts of the hair if I can. Come on this side. There. Did I say this was San Barbara? Yeah, I think I did. So I think I need a little bit of this beige sienna right in here because I think that's see-through. If your pencil is sharp, it's a lot easier to make the hair look like strands of hair. Okay. Down here. might come in and blend this with the eggshells to try and get it a little blonder. Let's get up here. And we're going to add one more darker color. At least one more. I like these little areas where the hair kind of goes into a V because it, it helps to give it some nice definition. Like it's, you know, separating and has movement. Okay, I'm going to keep... <clears throat> Gonna work up here a little bit with the beige sienna. And we've got this strand of hair. I want to make sure I do that properly. I know I'm all over the place, right? I'm just I keep seeing these spots, and I'm like, oh, I need color there. Oh, I need color there. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's and it's really it's a pain in the butt when I do it for myself too, because as I'm editing and I'm adding all the colors. That I'm using at the time. Um, I yell at myself all the time because it's like, would you just pick one dang color and just go with it? <laughs> because it makes editing really a pain. But that's how I color is I just keep switching back and forth until I get it, you know, to where I'm happy. So okay, back to the beige sienna. Let's just at least get this. And then sandbar brown. Hair. 
hair is almost always darker at the scalp. I don't I don't even I'm not even quite sure how to do that yet so I'm gonna move on for a minute and go to my sepia Okay, I'm going to take my, yeah, that's going to be good. All right, I'm going to take my eggshell. I feel like I didn't, I mean, I laid it down to start with, but I didn't really lay down a lot of it. And I do want him to be nice and blonde. So I'm going to put some more of that down. some some issues down here I'm not sure how to tackle those <laughs> all right a little bit more whoop, a little more blonde up here too okay sepia sharpen I think my problem is I'm rushing and rushing is not good because <laughs> you make mistakes and then you're not happy and that's no fun This all really needs a lot of work. Big time. I have big plans for the wings. For the whole page really 
This is one page I did plan out. So it'll be fun to keep going and watch it all come together. Okay, I do think this would be a little bit darker. Take some white. Another, another reason this paper is so awesome. Because um, I can come in and add special highlights at the end right where I want to. just always fascinates me how just adding that pop of white makes such a difference. I know sometimes I think that I can blend stuff with my finger. <laughs> but like, no, that doesn't always work. I purposefully chose sandbar brown <laughs> instead of sepia because sepia is always the color that I go to. And it's hard to step away from your um, habits isn't the right word, but your you know your the colors that you always seem to want to go for. Sepia is a really warm brown, and the sandbar brown is a to me is kind of a cool, dirty brown, and that's kind of what I wanted to do for him with his hair. Um, hoping that it, the colors are, I'm hoping the colors are right. Yeah, they look pretty good. Sometimes they, um. I don't know, sometimes my lighting is just weird and I can't get the colors right. Okay, now, <laughs> I know I just said that I'm not using espresso, but gosh, I really want to add some espresso. Um, Maybe we should try black instead. I know that doesn't make sense with um, blonde hair. But... A little bit sometimes, but you got to be really careful when I get carried away like I just did. Um, so I'll pull out my sandbar brown. Pull that in to darken that whole area some more. That's better. I think it just needs, you know, more, more dark under here. sepia. Where's my sepia? You're using the wrong color. Okay. That's better. So, no black. Just more sepia. I think. <laughs> Maybe not. This is black. No, I'm going to have to use some black. I just, 
I just have to. But you want to, or I should say I want to be careful not to um, bring it down too far. Just stay right up high near the darkest part. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off because I need to check the time. And when I come back, we'll see how much longer we have to spend with each other. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we have about 15 minutes if we want to be really careful and 20 minutes if we want to push it to the limit. Um, so I'm just going to kind of keep going with this and then... Um, and then it'll be time to move on and um, go to the next stream. I think the next stream is Shell Arty. And um, I apologize. I cannot for the life of me think of which um, artist she's going to be coloring. But no matter who it is, it will be fabulous. Let me figure out some stuff up here. Um, I'm not, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna put, the hair is going this way, we're gonna put some white highlight because we're gonna call that hair. Let's just, and then sandbar brown is going to come. And then sepia. I'm going to use eggshell. That'll look better after we get the bead color going down there, I think. All right, so eggshell, eggshell, eggshell. Actually, probably eggshell on the whole thing. And sandbar brown. Let's zoom in. How's that? Just feathering into the eggshell. I like that. Okay, sepia. So I really, really hope you guys will come back, visit me again, and um, color along with me on the rest of this page because I do think it's going to be really pretty when it's finished. How can it not? The image is so stunning. And I'm really happy that I did a guy because now my fear factor, my fear is gone. And, um, and maybe I can do more guys now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I like the way that sounded, uh, but you get the point. 
Okay, I just plan that out. Take my white. We still have the braid to do. Maybe that's what we could do is that braid. So, pencil. So I like my braids to be, um, oh, what did I do? I like my braids to be traditional kind of braids because that's, So I just took my pencil and kind of defined it more as a as a braid instead of a twist, I think. So when we do that, we'll take our white. right in the center of each one of those little and then eggshell This is where you really want those sharp pencils because it's tiny, it's a tiny little braid. I feel like I forgot to put eggshell down here. But maybe I didn't. I just can't see it. Okay, the sandbar brown. I did forget to put eggshell down. Then sepia is going to go into just the corners. Then we're going to want to, I think, add a little bit darker color. So <clears throat> rather than m starting to move on over here, I think I'm just going to take this time that we have left and try and darken some of these areas that really need it to my eye.
Now I'm, I'll still have the highlight up here, but I think as we work our way down, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna use a lot more of the sandbar brown and the sepia. And I think that'll make for a cool look, cool look on him. The more times I add these little dark bits, the more three-dimensional the hair gets and the better I like it. Again, I feel like I've really neglected the hair down here. <laughs> pretty good about this guys I hope uh, I hope you like what we're doing I want to um, thank you guys all again for coming and hanging out with me thank epic events for asking me to do this again and um, it's uh it's going to be a wonderful weekend, I should say. I mean, to, for me, it's going to be a wonderful weekend. For you, it already is a wonderful weekend. <laughs> um, and I will be there with you. Oh. I think. <laughs> I'm gonna just i'm just curious i can't stand it i have to bring some sepia in i just have to i can't i'm not capable i'm not strong i think i'm gonna add some sepia i know that's just terrible but you can see how much warmer that brown is maybe we can Maybe just a little bit, like not. Oh gosh, see, I like that so much better. Okay, so sometimes a plan has to change, right? You gotta, <laughs> you gotta go with what your gut feels. And my gut is telling me to add a little bit of sepia, not sepia. Espresso. Oh, yeah. Okay, I broke down. So I'm going to add a little bit of the espresso here and <laughs> I'm weak. What can I say? All right, you guys, we're at, we're almost at two hours. I, I want to give you a little bit of a chance to um, get something to drink and stretch your legs and all that good stuff. So I am going to say goodbye um, and hope that I will see you guys again for the rest of the video.
hate it when it does that. So there we are. There's, there's our guy. Sarah, you created a stunning page for us to color. I'm, I'm so thrilled with it. Um, so thank you so much, you guys. You just, I can't express in words how much I appreciate all the love you guys have given me. And um, until I see you again, um, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and happy coloring. Bye.